Yakima Valley Community College Radiologic Sciences Program presents Radiographic Positioning Acromia Clavicular Radiographic room up for a procedure known as acromial clavicular joints. You won't see this exam done often in the hospitals, but once in a while you will. I've got a 14 by 17 in the Bucky Tray crosswise. I've actually had our patient, Drea, stand up here a minute ago so I could get the vertical placement of the unit. We have a 72-inch distance because we're going to have the patient step to where her mid-sagittal plane, there you go, is to the center of the film. And the joint of interest is the acromioclavicular joint where the acromion and the clavicle meet. With the 72-inch distance, we're going to help minimize the OID. So set 72 inches. And Drea is small in structure, so I want you to pay attention to the light here for a minute because not all patients can be done on a 14 by 17. I can see her shadow here on the board, and so I can tell that the anatomy is going to be uh, able to fit on this 14 by crosswise. But think of a, a football player, a male football player, quite broad shoulders, and their shoulders would actually stand, uh, extend beyond the 17 inch of the cassette. Notice how I have the crosshair centered in the upper quadrant of this 14 by 17, because I'm going to actually do two projections on one cassette. We're going to do the first one with the film set this way, and then the second one, this is what it will look like in the end. Okay? I'll have to readjust the board when I actually set her up because this cassette's going to go in and send her to the unit. So I'll be realigning it, but I wanted you to see actually what we're doing with the film here before I push the cassette in. Uh, again, if you had a football player, you would not be able to do this on a 14 by 17. So we're going to start the procedure. This was just kind of an introduction to let you know why you're going to see things a little different here. And before we set her up, um, let me explain that you're going to do both shoulders. She may have a right side injury and you're going to do both shoulders, so there's a comparison. If there's an, a separation of the acromial clavicular joint due to injury, they want to be able to see and compare the two shoulders because I might, my joint space might be naturally wider than Drea's joint space versus somebody else's joint space. The only baseline comparison is within one person. So if I've pulled my right arm and separated my AC joint, they'll know it by looking at my left shoulder. I'm going to do her in an erect position so the arms are in, in a natural state. If the patient is lying on their back, the shoulders tend to relax and calm down a little bit. And then we're going to actually have our patient hold sandbags or weights, approximately five pounds, because we want to put the arms under some pressure to see what the muscles do, again, to see if there's a separation of the injury site. I, prefer, I prefer to do the uninjured projection first so the patient can get a feel and understand that the exposure will not take that long to, to make because when you give your patient the sandbags, if that shoulder really is hurt, this, is, this can be very, very painful for them. And, and for them to have that mental confidence that you're only going to take 30 seconds to finish it will help them deal with the pain. So I'm going to have my patient step to the board, have her back to the board. I'm going to adjust the central ray to the height of her AC joint here. Then I'm going to fix my board. Again, I can see the cassette here, and I'm going to want to send her to the upper quadrant. Keeping in mind the ID blocker is up here, so I'm centering just a little lower. The R marker is not under shadow of the shoulder, and this is to simulate a without marker because you want to label without weights, and then you want to label the with weights projection. Okay. So, again, the MSP is to the center of the film. The patient is straight. You're at the level of the AC joint. And then you want to put on a thyroid collar to protect the patient's sternum. Okay. 
and then you can make your exposure. Then you need to utilize sandbags of equal weights. These are approximately five pounds. But before you give the patient weight, you explain to them what's going on, and then you have to change your film to the lower quadrant, again with tight collimation this way, and have everything ready. And then you explain to the patient that you know this might be uncomfortable, but it's necessary for, for you to hold these sandbags. And I will hurry with the procedure. And do not just hand these sandbags to the patient. That's a lot of jerking weight. Let the patient get a grip on the sandbags, and then let them slowly lower their arms down so the weight is not so uncomfortable and you're ready to go. Again, MSP to the center of the film, leveled at the AC joints. Your marker needed to be changed before I actually gave her weight. Put a marker with weights on there, have them hold their breath, and make your exposure immediately come back in and take the weights from the patient. And that's the AC joints. And let me recap important things. You need to do both shoulders. You need to have tight collimation. And you need to utilize with weights and without weights. And when you use weights, they're of equal weight, not different weights. And don't just put weight in one hand. Because again, you're trying to compare the shoulders. They both need to have weight so you can see what happens there. When you have a patient that doesn't fit on a 14 by, it would be our recommendation to use a 10 by or even an 8 by film. And I'll just show you that setup. Can you have your patient up against the board? Now this time you're going to have your patient offset and center the AC joint that you're going to demonstrate to the center of the film. Here's your clavicle. There's the AC joint right there. You're going to have tight collimation. You're going to have the without marker or the with marker. And you're going to center to an upper quadrant of the film. Again, you're centered to the higher part of the film. There's your markers. Crosshairs right over the AC joint. You can see the shadow on the board, and you're exiting to the upper quadrant of that 10 by 12. And then you would make that exposure, and then you'd step your patient this way, so you do her left shoulder, again without weights, raise your board, okay, and then you can give them with, with weights. There's, um, you can do these on 8 by 10s, one exposure uh, per film, or you can do her left without weights, left with weights, and then right with weights or right without weights. So there's no set protocol. You just have to get the four shots. You have to get the both shoulders with and without weights. The advantage of the 14 by, if you think about it, how many times did the patient have to hold the weights? Dre, how many times? Once. Just once. So the pain level is much easier on the 14 by because they only have to hold the weights once. But if you have a large patient, the 14 by 17 is not an option. Plus, if you don't have access to a thyroid collar, that's unnecessary radiation to the main portion of the, of the trunk. Um, the using of 8 by 10s or 10 by 12s, uh, again, you get both shoulders with and without weights. The, uh, they, you have to change the films more often if you use four 8 by 10s. Uh, the 10 by 12 would be probably my choice to do when I have somebody who's larger than a 14 by 17 film. Drea, any suggestions? No. Okay. Thank you.